Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house, bored in the house, eh. Bored in the house, bored in the house, eh. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house, bored in the house, hey. Bored in the house, bored in the house, hey. I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house. Aloha, my ohana. And yes, as you saw in the intro, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. I'm sure all of you guys are feeling my pain right now. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out for all of those who jumped into my live stream on Aloha Friday. And if you guys missed out, don't worry. Maybe we'll do another one soon. Who knows? Comment down below. Let me know if you guys want me to do another Aloha Friday shout out and we'll do another live stream. It was so much fun, man. You guys missed it. And if you stay tuned towards the end of this video, you're going to see a little list of people that I want to give a shout out to for their love and support for the Hawaiian Fish Keeper and my channel. So there was a little bit of drama that just recently happened and a big shout out to Mrs. Hawaiian Fish Keeper. She just actually uh, saved the day. It got really bad and it could have got even worse in a matter of seconds if I didn't react. And I'm sure as you saw in the thumbnail, we got to basically rescue somebody, but we don't have to leave the compound of the house. We actually have to go rescue him in the nest here. And I'll explain the details as we get an emergency tank ready. It was actually the 30 gallon tank that uh, Rob and Big were in before I transferred them into their 60 gallon tank. So we're gonna go ahead and use that as a rescue tank. And I wanna make it nice because I feel extremely bad. You know, it's kind of my fault what happened, but Mrs. Hawaiian Fish Keeper saved the day. So I'll talk a little bit more about it in detail, all right? Let's go ahead and uh, get some substrate and make this tank really nice and comfortable as I tell the story. Let's go. For starters, let's go ahead and grab this Home Depot bucket. Let's take it over here. And we're going to get into this 20-gallon tank. Now, this 20-gallon tank was the tank that Rob and Big were in that I rescued. So we're going to go ahead and uh, use that dustpan there to get some of this substrate out all right so this is probably like one of the easiest ways to get in substrate out of a tank so we got all this substrate that we can use for this new tank all right now that we got the substrate uh, i think i'm gonna go ahead and Put this plant in there too. I'm gonna make them feel real comfortable. Like I said, I feel extremely bad on what happened. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just toss that in the substrate bucket and let's put this in the house. All right, so there's our substrate. There's a plant there and here is the tank that we're gonna use. 30 gallon tank. Let's go back into the garage and go get the heater that was in this tank and also that submersible filter that I had in here too that's actually um, for a 50 gallon tank. We're actually gonna put two filters on this tank, that submersible filter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a filter from on the back of this tank, Maui's tank. I have a hang on the back there for a 75 gallon tank that we're gonna stick right here because it already has beneficial bacteria in it. And since we have nothing in this tank and we're starting from scratch, that way we can jumpstart this tank and our new rescue will have a nice, fresh, perfect home. All right, here we go, it's right over here. Here we go, here's our heater and the submersible filter. Let's go get that HOB on the back of Maui's tank and put it right here. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this HOB very carefully so we don't spill any water and set it on the new tank over there. So here we go, try not to spill any water. I already unplugged it, so we're good there just tilt it back a little bit all right and here we go and then we're gonna go ahead and hang it right on the back here executed perfectly and there you go we got our HOB on our tank I went ahead and cleaned that cover. That cover was pretty nasty. So let's go ahead and stick our custom lid on it. See if it actually is around the same size as the Aquion that was on here. Oh yeah, look at that. It cuts out perfect. There we go. All right, didn't have to make any big adjustments on it. So now that we have a 
fully cycled hang on the back filter we can go ahead and jump start this tank let's go ahead and put our uh, substrate and our plant that we have in here and give it a little bit of escape a little comfortable touch let's go ahead and put this first plant uh, let's put it over here in this side yeah we'll put it down here in the corner so you can see it there we're gonna go ahead and smooth it out and we're not gonna do anything fancy although at least he's got some substrate in here and this substrate is pretty cool you know it's got a little bit of black sand mixed with white uh, looks like a natural stone gravel so that's what our plant looks like there in the corner kind of looks like bamboo shoots kind of a combination plant um, that I just had it's nothing special I just had this plant in the garage so we're gonna go ahead and uh, level out this uh, substrate a little bit more and uh, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stick those lava rocks that I have there in uh, Maui's tank in here because those are packed with beneficial bacteria too as well plus um, I want to get those rocks out of there anyway so yeah, that would be a good this is a good time to do that the last lava rock <laughs> which we'll kind of just put right up in this little hole here or this little gap. I love working with lava rock. It's just easy to work with. They stack, they connect like puzzles really easy. And they also pack a ton of beneficial bacteria. And just like that, it is filled up and this is what it looks like. I'm digging out on it for kind of like a, you know, really quick scape with the black lava rock and this white and uh, black substrate combo. We got the bamboo shoot type plant in the corner. I'm digging out on it. And just so you guys know, this substrate I did rinse out in the aquarium. Um, so it's not like I just used some dirty aquarium uh, substrate from an old tank. Just an FYI, I washed it thoroughly with the hose outside. Um, definitely I killed all the beneficial bacteria that is in the substrate, but it is the same substrate. So just an FYI, clean out your substrate, all right? Don't just use some old funky substrate from another tank, especially from a stranger. Okay, so this side of the tank, we have our heater down here, and then we also have a pre-filter sponge around the intake valve of the hang on the back filter. As you can see, I put an extender, so it brought it down closer to the bottom of the aquarium. And then we have our submersible filter here. Now, the cool thing about this submersible filter is it's actually equipped for a 50-gallon tank, and it gives you uh, aeration. So you, got, you can actually take that off if you don't want to, or you can put a spray bar which is pretty cool and you can put it up towards the top of the tank and it you know gives it some water agitation with the spray bar um but i'm i prefer the uh, bubbles which is really cool um the only thing is like aesthetically wise if you look at it it's not really pleasing to the eye in the tank but i tell you what this thing has as far as benefits if i ever need a quick tank like a 30 gallon tank even a 40 gallon breeder i can unplug this I can stick it in that tank and it's immediately cycled because in this compartment here is a big sponge similar to this one here and full of beneficial bacteria so it can jump start a tank really fast by just plugging it in setting it inside the aquarium of course you know the water's got to be uh dechlorinated and whatnot and i got an instant filter just like an emergency filter until i can get something you know that i i want to get but this is really good if you have room in a spare tank just to have this running uh with fish in it obviously so it keeps it cycled um you can actually probably customize this because it's a big sponge it's pretty Pretty long you can probably cut the sponge in half like right about here and then fill this top part full of uh, biological media which is probably pretty smart to do maybe I'll do something like that on another video and and customize this some some submersible filter it's really great uh, I think I spent $15 on it too really great buy all right so let's pop the hood and see what's underneath this hang on the back filter let's see what we're working with here Yep, we got a nice custom job here. All of my HOBs got custom jobs. We got a thick, right there, macropore foam, which goes into this chamber too as well. And at the bottom here, we have filter floss, AKA polyfill. And then we have this bag of cycled media on top of that. So pretty much how I do all my HOBs, I always put some type of biological media all that is cycled and that's how we're able to jumpstart this 
tank. So this is pretty much it from afar. Not bad for a little quick scape, you know what I mean? So uh, let me tell you what happened. All right, so before story time, go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't already. And if you haven't subscribed to the Hawaiian Fish Keeper, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Turn it on, it's just gonna notify you when I put out a new video. I'm sitting in front of the tank where the scene of the crime is, right? So basically this tank here if you guys don't know it's my predator tank it's extremely aggressive as you can see i got an oscillaris peacock bass i got a red devil i got a couple severum cichlids in here as well as a salvini cichlid a jack dempsey and a green terror so it's extremely aggressive and then i also had my lemon oscar in this tank now out of all the fish in this tank my lemon oscar is probably the least aggressive for the most part they all kind of mind their business as you can see them in the back there there's an occasional chase like cichlids do but like nothing out of the ordinary until my wife said hey babe you got to check that tank out i think they're picking on the lemon oscar and i'm like no 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 he's fine i would come here i would look and i'm like no he looks good i can see him you know he's fine I have a special bond with my lemon Oscar. He almost got his tail fully bit off. As you can see in some of this footage here, he got it bit off by Boy the Flower Horn. He felt so bad for him. I scooped him up, put him in the 10 gallon tank, nursed him back to health, his tail fully recovered. I took, obviously, I took Boy the Flower Horn out, stuck him in his own 40 gallon tank, and then I reintroduced the lemon Oscar to this tank, and he was fine. He would eat, he would swim around, nothing out of the ordinary. I fed him one time. I put a bunch of pellets in there and everybody usually smashes the top. Boom, boom, boom. He didn't eat anything. That's when I knew something was up. So I'm looking at him, right? I'm looking at him. Then I seen the green terror come out of nowhere and just smash him. And I can only see one side of him, not knowing what the other side looked like. So I went around the tank and I look and I can see it's beat up. It's really beat up. Not really bad, but it's beat up. It looks like a piece of sandpaper just like scuffed him. So I immediately go into action i'm like i gotta get this guy out of there so i'm thinking where can i put him oh i'll put him in maui's tank on the other side because i have that divider so i net him he's right up over here right by this wave maker um it wasn't hard to get him he was just there right i net him he's still got some fight he's wiggling around in the net this tank temperature is the exact same as maui's i went over there i put him inside the other half and immediately he just is floating He's not moving, he doesn't look good at all. He's just kind of drifting around in the current. I turn off the wave maker in Maui's tank and he's just drifting. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is bad. So I panic, I net him again, I bring him back here and underneath this cabinet here, I have a 10 gallon tank. It's my hospital tank. So I put him in there, I net my red moto, which is in there, and I put him in Maui's tank on the other side. So that's the fish that's on the other side of Maui's tank, and he's still doing bad, he's just floating. I do a huge water change, like 60% water change. I put aquarium salt in there along with Melifix, and then I noticed there's like, like a cable from the heater and an airline hose, kind of like this, up against the glass. So what I did was with my hand, because he really wasn't moving much, I grabbed him and I wedged him in between it, you know, keeping him upright. And the sponge filter, the bubbles were going right over his gills. And it was like a perfect spot for him. And said a little prayer, went to sleep, woke up the next morning, immediately got up. First thing I did was open up the cabinets and look at him and he was down at the bottom swimming. So he, he, he made a comeback. I brought him back from almost the dead. I don't think he can make it another night in this tank. I cut up a small piece of shrimp, throw it in there, he immediately grabs it. So I'm like, oh my gosh, he made a comeback. So he's been down in there for almost two weeks now. Um, looks good. I can't really see him because he's way in the back corner tucked in. So that's why we built this tank for him and I felt bad and I wanted to make it look nice and comfortable. Now obviously he can't be in there forever. For now it's the perfect size for him. Big shout out to the wifey. She actually saved his life. I think she's kind of like the Oscar whisperer. Good thing she kind of like pointed it out to me. Thank you Mrs. Hawaiian Fish Keeper. Let's go ahead and net him down here and we're going to go put him in his new tank. All right, let's go. All right, so here he is. He's in, like I said, the far back corner where it's really dark, and um, he's on the opposite side of the divider there. Now, he looks great. From here, he looks great. This is basically how I can see him. This is exactly how you guys can see him. Let's go ahead and net him. I'm going to put him in his new tank. Well, it looks like somebody's getting used to his new home out here. He's looking so good, guys. This is my lemon oscar and he's looking gorgeous this is the right side of his body here 
this is the side I want to see his left side. Oh, perfect. Oh, gosh, you can see it's a little discolored, but for the most part, he made a total recovery. Fins look good, dorsal fin. His pectoral fins look great. Look at him. Showing off. I know you had a rough month, but this is all you, nobody else. Now, he's not going to be able to stay in this tank for much long, but for the time being, you know, we I think we made it comfortable enough for him. And you can see how big he is compared to his tank. So he's got some space. He's got some room in here. Tell me what you think down in the comments below, guys. Don't forget to like. And we're going to see him in um, up and coming videos. Maybe we'll do a feeding video on him next. But for the most part, he's looking beautiful. Stay safe. Stay healthy, guys. Happy fish. Happy life. Much love. And aloha.